If I had lived in the days of Christ after his crucifixion and after his uh, resurrection and then the church coming forth in the book of Acts and then in the epistles the apostles wrote I would have said I'm living in the end time. I'm living in the time of the end. Um, because that would have been the end of my era of life and it would have been the end of that dispensation. But there is an end of all ends and that's the final day. And we're living I believe now, if I lived in the days of Paul, Paul even indicated in his writings that there were days to come. Even though he said time is short, um, 1 Corinthians 7, he used that expression, time is short. That they that have wives be as though they had none. In other words, care for the things of the Lord more than that of domestic affairs. But Paul even indicated that he saw beyond. And he said in 1 Corinthians 13, Now then we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, uh, he saw there was a day ahead. And it was not over in his day. But in our day, we have scriptures that shows us and we won't be able to get into them tonight because it's such a vast subject. We'll touch maybe one or two. But my point is, this is the end of the end. We are living not now in a dispensational end, but in the end of all dispensations, all time. Time is coming to an end. Amen. Now that doesn't mean anything if you just leave it there. You just make that statement and leave it there. It doesn't mean very much. But when you begin to study, what does it mean? The end time, the time of the end. Um, I was listening to the newscast tonight, and as I said to the church Sunday, don't get depressed about the newscast. Just listen to them and be informed the state of California, the legal system is collapsing um, to where that they will be, won't be able to conduct any court business. Uh, criminal cases will be stockpiled. They'll have no way to deal with them. Um, they'll have no way to deal with civil issues because they're laying off hundreds of people in the court system. Um, in the state of um, Connecticut, 500 state workers laid off. Uh, they don't have clerks to fill out legal papers in the court uh, rooms, such as our county courthouse here. If you apply almost for any legal document, you may wait up to a year uh, before you might get that document, including driver's license. Uh, because the whole legal system is collapsing because they have no money to pay people with. So they're just laying them off, stopping work. Uh, see, this, this is only a little bit. I don't want to go into all that, but I, I, I listen to the news. I don't let it depress me, bother me. But I can tell you this, and I don't keep it, I don't let it gauge my, what I do for the church. I, I, I just know what's happening. This is the end of the end. Now that doesn't mean anything unless somehow the church decodes that message, deciphers that message. And the church really understands all the parts of what happens in the end. What is to take place in the end. Oh, and that then it won't amaze you when you see that. And it's going to happen according to the scriptures in the church and out of the church. The church is not going to be spared from tribulation. 
uh, we will not escape tribulation. We will be in the first seven and a half years of the prophetic one hour in the scriptures, 15 years, one hour, seven and a half, half an hour. And in that seven and a half years, and I fully believe we're now on the edge of it, if not entering into it, the seven and a half years of tribulation the Bible speaks about. Now remember I said don't get morbid, don't get depressed when we teach these lessons. But your hope in God, anchor your life in Christ. Put your hand in the hand of the Lord. Uh, walk with God. Draw nigh unto God. Um, because he's a shelter in the time of storm. But there, this great tribulation will be the most horrendous time on the earth according to prophecy and according to the scriptures. But then beyond that, what is the church to be doing? Now that's what I'm concerned about because I'm in the church. I'm part of the church. And the church, it does not really, it does agree in my spirit as a Holy Ghost man, a Holy Ghost filled child of God and a minister. I agree because of the condition I see the church in, but it does not startle me or amaze me uh, for two things. What, what condition do you mean, Brother Marlon? The world very heavily in the church, very heavily, uh, like water in the Titanic, the world. And when I say the world, I mean I'm not talking about nitpicking or straining on an app and swallowing a camel. I'm talking about the influence of the world. The world of what? The world of the unlicensed Adamic nature, world of the flesh, world of of uh, not care, I don't care. Uh, I, I really, I don't want you to get too close with me in the word. I don't want the word too close. I don't want you to come at me with a word. I, you know, stay back from the word. I, let me live kind of like I want to live. And that, that, that's really very heavy, but it doesn't amaze me because um, the church is prophesied that it will be very heavily influenced by the world before the coming of Christ. And then the church is fragmented and people, uh, our ministry is confused and people, some people, not all ministry, not all people, but there's confusion. And, and what do you mean confusion? Uh, not sure of the exact stand to take in the word not sure of the Holy Ghost speaking or another spirit speaking. Not sure of it being spiritual or natural, things that are happening to, to me and to you. Um, trying to decipher, is this God? Is this not God? Is God working? Is God not working? Uh, if I do that, am I out of the will of God? If I do that, if, if I don't do that, I'm out of the will of God. Uh, in other words, no direct leadership of the Holy Ghost with many, not everybody. But that doesn't either because that too is prophesied that it would be in the beginning of the Great Tribulation or the first seven and a half years that the church will go through. Uh, and when I look at uh, the scriptures then, I, I think, well, what should the church be doing then? If it's um, if it's not if it's not to be engaged in the world, if I am to know the mind of God and the will of God, uh, what am I to be doing? All right, then I think the Scripture shows me what I'm to be doing, where others may not be doing that, and I and it shows me that I must then do that whether others do that or not. I cannot uh, get upset because they don't. I can't get carried away because they do. I must work out my salvation. Yes. 
with fear and with trembling. I must stand and be in God, and I must have an individual relationship with God, and that individual relationship will let me be of one spirit and one mind, so I can be part of one body. Uh, so you guys question as I go. This is a Bible study night, and so um, now look at look at First Thessalonians. We'll go through some scriptures here, and look at First uh, Thessalonians five, and um, look at what Paul uh, said. Um, he said uh, many things, of course, in First Thessalonians five, but he said, let's, let's look at. Um, <coughs> Let's, let's take the verse 1. We'll have to take verse 1. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and the seasons, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1, Paul's letter. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I want you to notice something here. Paul said, You have no need. So there's a group of people there that separate. You have no need. That couldn't be everybody, because there's always somebody that has a need. But these have no need. That's a separated, set apart group in the church of Thessalonica. You have no need that I write to you. So Paul wasn't really writing to them. He was writing to another group in that church, because he comes down and he, he, put, he puts out another uh, group in, uh, in verse 3. For when they shall say, yes. you have no need, they shall say, peace and safety. Then the sudden destruction cometh upon them, not upon you that have no need. See, there was a group that had no need. But here's a group that was going to have sudden destruction. See that separated. So in the church, there is a group that has no need. They know what time it is. How do they know? Because they live close enough to God. Because the Holy Ghost talks to them. How do they know? Because they read the Word. How do they know? Because they have relationship with God. How do they know? Because they find a ministry that they know the Holy Ghost witnesses and says, this is my ministry. Just like John the Baptist knew Jesus Christ. How did he know Jesus Christ? How many people did John the Baptist baptize before, John, uh, before Jesus came? Jesus was a man. He was a Jew. Scripture doesn't say he had any distinguishing marks about him. How did he know? Only one way. God revealed to John and said, This is my beloved son. When God reveals to you ministry, so you can follow that ministry, you can listen to that ministry, you can just shut out everything else, not because man told you, not because a man said, dangerous to follow a man because a man said. You know that is dangerous. To follow a man because a man said. Uh, but when the Holy Ghost reveals to you, Brother Harris came here many years ago, uh, it's in Mississippi now, and said he came here and left the church he pastored, Baptist Church, in Wachula, because God said to him, when he saw me, this is a man that can teach you. 
and settled it with Brother Harris. He was here 30 some years with us. This is a man that can teach you. God settled it. See, so they will be destroyed because sudden destruction will come upon them. That's in the church. That's today. As we enter into the great tribulation, that's why you can't get angry at people. A minister can't. A uh, church can't. If they can't see. If they don't see. Because they can't see unless God lets them see. They can't see unless God lets them see. You can't get upset with them. You can't say, away with you. No, you have to keep a good spirit. Love them. Pray for them. And, and don't take any spirit to do them harm. Uh, hurt them. Talk about them. Because you, they can't see unless God lets them see. And when I heard William Sellers, when I was 12 years of age, 60 years ago, uh, more than that, 65 years ago now, time going back, 65 years ago, I knew that William Sellers was a prophet of God. When I heard Jim Roberts, I knew Jim Roberts was a man I would follow as long as he lived, and I did. I knew, I, I knew Brother Sowers was because God revealed it to me, and I never doubted. I never doubted that. You see, because God has to reveal to you in order for you to have no need. They, I, I write it, but you have no need, Paul said. You know perfectly well that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Now, he was talking about uh, this day and that day. And that day, Paul was speaking of this day. 2,000 years ago, Paul wrote this letter for this church tonight in Breed. This day, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them and they will not escape as travail upon a woman with a child. But ye, brethren, now he come, comes back, you see? How he does this? But ye, comes back. But ye, brethren, there's that group. You're not in darkness, that that day should overtake you. So there's going to be a saved people. There's going to be a remnant. There will be a special sanctified, set-apart people when Jesus comes in the middle of the tribulation. And he's coming in the middle of the tribulation at the end of seven and a half years. I feel very definite in my spirit we could be entering into that seven and a half year period. If things continue as they are and the signs keep breaking open and developing, I know we are. I know we are. I'm going to live accordingly. I'm going to live the way he wants me to live. I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to run out and uh, try to build me an underground bunker somewhere or, you know, pile me up with stuff way up to the ceiling in case I starve. No, I'm not going to do that. I buy groceries every week as I can because my God will take care of me. I'm not going to go out and buy all the clothes I get because I'm afraid they'll run out of clothes and can't buy anymore. No, I'm going to trust God. But we can be in that last time, the end of the day. And because every sign is pointing to it. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Say, you are the children of the light. So there's a special thing. There is a special thing. You are children of light and the children of the day. We're not of the night, nor of darkness. Now somebody was. Somebody was because they said they uh, will be overcome and they'll have birth pains come upon them as travail upon a mother with a child. And they won't escape. That day will come like that. But you're not that way, he said, because he said, you are not children of the night. You're not children of the night. You're children of the day. 
And he said, because we're children of the day, then let us not sleep. Let us not sleep. Now, you and I know, of course, we know. I'm going to try to sleep some tonight. I'm like, that's not natural sleep. I'm going to try to get me some sleep. You know. But how? How? Let us not sleep. How? Sleep in our mind, our spirit, our heart, our vision. Sleep, slumber, not know, uh, be in a stupor. Um, we're not to sleep. The foolish virgins. Sister Margaret. The foolish virgins. The foolish virgins. Yes. Uh, thank you. Have you read Matthew 25 recently? I mean, let's go there right now. Hook that in the first Thessalonians 5. Because, you know, uh, and I hope I'm teaching you gospel. I, I'm not Absolutely. I'm not getting this out of the book. I'm taking it right from here. Um, and what I'm teaching has been handed down through the apostles and the prophets and the reformers. I'm not teaching something Brother Marlowe can capture that. In Matthew 25, okay, we'll go come back to 1 Thessalonians 5, and then see how much time we got, because young people will be coming in here in about 30 minutes or so. Um, okay, in Matthew 25, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened or compared to ten virgins. Virgin is a woman that has not experienced carnal knowledge with any one on this earth. She's a virgin, a woman virgin. And there were there were ten of these. No carnal